These pepper plants have been some of the most productive crops that I've had going all summer. My boy Jason from Smoky Spices, and he's my friend from the farmer's market. We delivered him like 100 pounds of habanero peppers just a couple days ago. These peppers are grown in my backyard. We delivered 100 pounds to Jason the other day. We delivered him another 100 pounds a few weeks ago, and we're probably going to bring him another 100 pounds in three more weeks you know so we'll be giving this guy about 300 pounds of habanero peppers i've been slinging some on the sides too to some restaurants and things like that today he's actually smoking them so we're gonna go over to his place we're gonna check out the whole process see how he smokes the chili peppers then he dries the chili peppers then he grinds them up into spices he sells them at the farmer's market and he ships them all over the world you can order my habanero chili pepper spices dried smoked from jason through the link below so make sure you order some chili spices because these things won't last long. I mean, as soon as I tell people that they're going to buy my chili peppers off the internet, forget about it. These things are going to be gone. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to buy stuff out of my backyard garden. So I'm going to hop on the bike today. We're going to go over to Jason, see what he's up to, smoking, drying chili peppers. I'm going to show you his whole operation. This thing is impressive. Let me tell you, guy does all this and, you know, something he built. It's an approved food manufacturing facility. Place is impressive. He's an impressive guy using my peppers. I mean, forget about it. The, the, the whole situation is just amazing. It's going to blow your mind and you taste good. So I'm going to hop on the Harley. We're going to go over there. Let's get rolling, baby. But that's, that's what it turned out to look like. And that's a coarse ground. So it's like it goes through, it goes through the, the grinder the first time with all the big pieces and seeds and everything. And so it's like a coarse ground. And then what we'll do is when I have four of these, then we'll, we'll mix each one together and grind it together, and then it kind of turns into a powder like that. Because when they're when the real light peppers, like the, the chunks that are in there, they're really light. So it just kind of throws it all around. It's not a lot of heaviness down there when it's grinding in the blender to uh, to get it to powder. So it's like flakes like that. But when, I, when it's heavier... Can I touch it? Yeah, yeah, you can touch it. I tried some. I didn't, I didn't grab spice yet. I tried the actual pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so like I sold it to some chefs, you know. Yeah. And like as soon as like sometimes, well, I guess the hot peppers they just want to try them immediately. Right. You know what I mean? Because everybody wants to know. And like so, I brought them into these guys. They just started slicing them right in front of me and just eating them. I'm like, oh, like I'm good. Wow. Like, but a couple of them were like, yeah, they're not that hot. I was like, I don't know, dude. Like I nibbled one and it's pretty hot. Like. So it depends on who you are. I'll tell you though, man, if you if you pull from the bottom of the pepper, like you know, you got the spine running down in there with all the seeds up to the top. That's hot immediately. If you pull from the bottom of the pepper, you don't get any heat at all. Like uh, just teeny, teeny maybe it's just a tiny bit on any pepper, any hot pepper. But when you get closer up to where the seeds are gathered together, that's mm -hmm. where the flesh starts getting hot. Because the heat comes from mostly the seeds in the spine, right? So um, when I was doing my garden years ago. When I first started just trying out, we would take every pepper and cut it and de seed it and, and right. get it all night and then smoke it like that. Um, and it was it was totally night and day between heat levels by leaving the seeds in. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I just kept them. I just started just keeping them in there. Plus, it's easier to process that way, dude. Right. So, like, you sent me a picture this morning, and it looked like they were just, like, you just pulled the stem off the top? Yeah, we, just, we take every stem off. We, what we do is we take... So we'll, we'll, we'll sit and we'll wash them and then we'll pull each stem off individually and just drop the pepper in one of these tubs like that. And then that then goes into the fridge and then we'll have, you know, I can get roughly seven of those, seven or eight of those on the smoker at one time. Yeah. And so we'll just put them all in there and then, you know, and then the next day or whatever, we'll, we'll process them. Um, so do you think like for me picking them, because like I said, I've been storing them in like a 60 degree room. Right. Do you think it's better to refrigerate them? I've done both, right? Because yeah. I have the storage space to do that. And I haven't noticed much of a difference right. at, I didn't in there. Because some of them were in the fridge. Like at first, the first batch mm -hmm. I brought you, those ones got stored in the fridge. And then I was like, well, I did some research. You know? Right. And they said store them at 50. So right. I've got this little room that I can keep at 60. That's the lowest that AC unit will right. you know, I mean, sometimes like 57, so that's where I've been storing them. But like I said, I threw out a whole case. Right. You know what I mean? So I yeah. wonder if those were in the fridge, would I have had that same problem? You might have got a little bit longer, just a little bit, like maybe an extra day, yeah. you know, maybe a day and a half. I mean, honestly, it just once they, when, when you're, if you just had like three or four peppers in the fridge, 
and they're not touching each other and they're not on each other and, and the weight on in there and everything, then they last a while in the fridge, right? They'll start getting kind of wrinkly, but they don't rot in the fridge for a long time. Right. But when you, for some soft. reason, when you've got, they get a little soft, right? Yeah. When, when, you have them, when you have them all together and they're like in a big tub and they're just all together, you know, there's that one in there or whatever and it just, you know, like a little leaven, leavens the whole lump, right? Just a little bit of rot will like really start to, to, to you know, expand in there quickly. Yeah. Uh, especially, especially if any of them have been cut at all. So a few of them had like the dark spot and we'll just cut that out of there and the rest of it's all good. Once you cut it and you open up to the inside, you're on the clock, right. like you're on the clock. I mean, within, within three days, you know, I, I would always try to smoke within a day or two after, after cutting or chopping um, because you wait three days and there's a definite percentage of them in there that are starting to get slimy. They're starting to kind of, get, it's just, it's a, you know, I say rot. I don't know what it is, what process it is that makes it slimy in there, whatever that bacteria on there or whatever's going on to do that. So <clears throat> of the, of the 50, it was 56 and a half pounds you brought me. And then Charlie had about, it was around nine pounds. So I had 65 pounds of peppers that I put on the smoker. That right there weighs 59 ounces. One fluid ounce jar. And so, you know, in this one, I've got like this red pepper flakes. Is, so this pepper flakes is half an ounce in this jar. But the banana pepper is 0.56, gotcha. right? So it's by volume, and then you gotta put the label yep, on there right. with the weight. Well, I've gotta weigh the jar, I'll, I'll weigh the spice in the jar, and then I'll have the label created because I don't know what the numbers are, and, and based on the numbers and the grams, or just been servings and, and all that. So I have, to, I have to weigh them all, each each size jar, and know what, how much is in there, and then I can create, get all three labels created for different sizes, and then get, get in there, right? So so you sell them all for different prices? No, they're, they're all, like, I don't. I sell this jar, is well, I, I sell the, the pepper spices, straight pepper spices, for more than I do the mix because the mix costs me less to make, right? Yeah, so uh, pepper spices, this jar is six forty nine, this jar is twelve ninety nine, and this jar is twenty five ninety nine just for pepper spices because it costs me to grow them and, and to, to process them and from scratch, making the spice from scratch from the fresh peppers, right? But on on the uh, seasonings and rubs or anything that I've mixed, or salt, or garlic, or cinnamon, those kinds of things, that I'm buying bulk in, that I get at a pretty decent price, right? Cheaper price I can grow or buy peppers for. This one's $6.49, $9.99, and this one's $19.99. Gotcha, so some you just make more on, and some you make less on. Well, that, that, that's true, that's very true. However, the way it works out is pretty close because I sell it by the weight, right? And some, like steak seasoning, for instance, gotcha. is, I, that's that's one of my cheapest spices as far as what I've got in it, yeah. but there's there's almost five ounces in that big jar, whereas the the uh, hot chili powder, there's, there's you know, 3.6 ounces in there, right? So there's a big difference in the weight, but selling for the same price, it's, it works out to where, you know, I make, I make a little bit more, a little bit less on whatever it is, but it's pretty close, close enough that I can, I can have a, one jar size price rather than each individual jar size and you know, that'd be I'd have 90 different prices, right? right. It's like, Ugh. <laughs> so yeah. I don't want to confuse people. So right. you know, when I when I take out all the lids and the labels and the, and the, and the labor to make it and the cost of the peppers and everything I've got in that jar, okay. that's that's my profit off of roughly, right? And that that doesn't include lights and and extra costs of pest control and the operating costs, right? I don't include that in the actual cost but the cost is how much the spice cost how much labor time do i have in it processing it and getting it in the jar you know, right everything else the packaging everything right. that's my cost right is what i keep but i do have extra like you know like i said pest control and electric bill and so at 350 pounds <clears throat> what do you actually want to pay I, I would love i would love to be in the 250 to three dollar range of what i get it for because i could probably charge a little extra for habanero I, because it just is what it is it's, it's a little it costs a little more than cayenne it costs a little more than us sweating a little bit from putting it on oh are you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I tried that <laughs> and it was like it took about 10 minutes for it to be about about habanero hot or about jalapeno hot uh -huh. and then there was another four or five minutes after that so it was a good 15 minutes of, of heat in your mouth yeah. which is not typical of the peppers I grow. The heat that I grow, it's like it's gone in 
three, four, five minutes. You know, the cayenne hangs on a little bit in the back of my throat, but that one's so pungent, man. It's so like, it's a stinging smell. You smell, you're like, whoa. Yeah. We were grinding today, and I had to wear my respirator, yeah. right, dude? I mean, it was like, you know, ground that, and did the first little bit, put it in there, and I wanted to smell it just yeah. to see if it had the smoke on it. And dude, I mean, I took the smallest, smallest little sniff. I mean, it was just this little teeny, 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 tiny sniff, and then boom! And I was like, oh my gosh, man, it got up in there, and, and it was so pungent and stinging. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the heat. Right. I feel like there's another hundred pounds on the planes. Already? I mean, they're green. Yeah. You know what right I mean? Right, kind of. But, like, yeah, <coughs> like, I feel like I got about a hundred pounds. I roughly, there. roughly for me, I was averaging, and, and this was across globally, every single pepper variety is the total for everything, not individual peppers, but I was averaging right around four pounds per plant for the entire season. Yeah. Right? That's where I would get off each plant for the entire season. Mm -hmm. So I planted like, you know, 8,000 plants and I got about 30,000 pounds. Right. right? And so that's how I figured it out was that, man, I, you know, I'm, you know it's, it's roughly 3.7, 3.8 pounds per plant and some more. Like the banana pepper, more than that. Cayenne, less than that. Right. right? But that's what I figured. So if you got 100 plants, then you get four pounds off each plant, then you got about 400 pounds of habaneros coming. And that that's obviously depends on two conditions and grow conditions and that kind of thing. You can get a little more, you can get a little less, but if right. that's the case for habaneros, then 400 pounds for the season is probably pretty likely. And you're gonna get more in the first two two to three, that first picking, it's thin, right? There's just a few on there, that first picking. Right. And then those flowers come, yeah. right? And then it starts to really bulge out. The second picking is good. Yeah. But for me, in all the peppers I grew, the third and fourth pickings were like double what everything else was for the rest of the year. The third, like fourth, one, and that was, that was my September pickings, right? right? And then October, it was, it started to be where more of them were rotting, more of them were smaller, they're misshapen, and the plant was starting to, it was a little bit cooler nights, and the plant was being affected by that, right? So it wasn't producing as strong and vibrant of, of peppers, right? Mm. And so, but I could take them all, so I just picked them all. Um, but at some point, these are probably going to be not worth doing for you because they start getting smaller and just the time involved. I think do it one more time, time probably, and think then so? terminate the plants and get a fall crop. Do something going in there? Okay, yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah. <clears throat> well, um, you know, I'm, I, I certainly appreciate you doing it for sure. Oh, and, yeah. and Charlie actually called me today and said he's got a bunch of habaneros. What do I want them? And, and I told him that you were charging me three fifty of, of a habanero. I, I couldn't believe it because it was a thin wall. And so the only thing I can think is that that seed, the seed pod in there that has all those seeds. When you open it up, it's, it's, it's full. It's like there's so many seeds in one of them that that just has a lot of moisture in it and is dehydrated down to, to like not very much, right? Yeah. But they're very light. It was a, we would fill our, fill our pitchers up to grind and it was, it was only like this much in the bottom of it after you grind. So it's like real thin and they're, they're really, really light. But this is the first time I've done it, and I knew that I had to go through the whole process to really know what right. it was. But, I mean, but it, it surprised me. It, yeah. it definitely surprised me. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely do that on the price for them next time. So. I mean, I don't know how the guys can, you know, habanero powder not smoke on my supply, but where I buy all my other spices, the, the, yeah. the spice supply place, I can get it for $1.36 an ounce dried and ground already. I just grow a thousand acres of them. I guess. Mexico, you know. I, I don't know how they I don't know how they can do that. I really don't. I don't understand it. I mean taking stems off, it took us about it took two people about an hour to go through all of those in there. A lot of it's like illegal labor too in agriculture. Yeah. I mean you know I mean they're just paying people like less than minimum wage under the table cash. You still gotta grind it down. Minimum. You still gotta take that time to, to grind it down. I mean I smoke it which is the other added value that these don't have, right? But I mean, the difference between buying it, buying it in already dry form like that for $1.36 and, and then just smoking that yeah. instead of smoking the fresh pepper, it's different. It has, it has a different smoke on it. It's a, it's a, very, mm -hmm. it's a very smoky smoke, mm -hmm. not a caramelized sweet smoke, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't smell like food. It smells like a campfire, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the difference, which is why my product is different than other smoked stuff. Right. So, but I have to, as a business, I have to weigh all the different options and everything. And, you know, you have to have a better product. Right. Right. I mean, the, right. Especially the charge on charge. Right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. Same so, thing with like my lettuce. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I can't charge what I charge for my lettuce. And it's not better than right. what right. people can yeah. buy off the truck. That's you know? Exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah.
you know, I like my process, but it's very proprietary, mm -hmm. right? And and that's the reason that other stuff, other smoke stuff, isn't like what mine is, right? It's, there's a reason for that, and you know, I don't think people want to take the time to do it like that, too, to be honest with you, because right. it's very laborious. So mine, I, I'm more smoke roasted, right, mm -hmm. to get that skin to start to, to, and you'll see it out here, it starts to wrinkle, and it looks like it's caramelizing, right? And, and, and as a chef, you, you'll see it when we open it up, mm -hmm. that it just looks different than, mm -hmm. than it's shiny, it's pulling those sugars out of there. And it's, it's, cool. it's cool, man, it's cool, yeah. right? And so it's different. Um, it's, it's very different than, than what other people do, at least what I've been able to taste anyway. But I don't know anybody else's process. I, I, I developed this on my own, out of my garden years ago, just yeah. for me to cook with in my own home. Right? And I had my son had some popcorn. I said, bring your popcorn over here. And he brought it over and then I sprinkled a little bit of that pepper on there. And I took a bite and I was like, oh, that tastes like smoked popcorn. That's so amazing. That it's good, right? And I was so excited, I was like, wow. And so for all the rest of the peppers that year in the garden, I smoked them all and I dried them all. Wow. And I ended up making stuff. I made some chili powders and some taco seasonings. And I'm like, dude, the smoked taco yeah. seasonings is amazing. <laughs> I right? I was, so, I was so like proud of, yeah. of a, you know, and it was a total hobby. And, you know, I did that for four or five years, just making some out of the garden for me. And we'd give some away at holidays. And I bought these little plastic jars and lids. And we had mailing labels that we had printed out. It said paprika, or hung ha ha Hungarian paprika, that kind of thing. And just gave them away as gifts and stuff. And everybody called back. Cool. You know, oh, dude, can you make some more of that chili powder for me next year? Wow. You know, and so it kind of just kind of built like that. But, you know, for four or five years, it was just a complete and total hobby yeah. just something fun to it's do like my in the garden yeah exactly yeah. i love a garden now the garden is so therapeutic yeah to walk through there in the evening when the sun goes down and rub your hands on some basil and just kind of smell down your fingers as you're walking through and seeing how things are growing and it's my favorite thing is snacking on cherry tomatoes i just walk by, yeah, right? walk by and it's like <laughs> half the time i just eat them all the time <laughs> if i actually make money <clears throat> Uh, can well, we look in the smoke? Yeah, we can bring it up. Cool. You want to get set up before I do that? You see the, the smoke. The heat, the heat from the firebox heats up and it comes in right on that corner there. And so this whole side right here just is really, really hot. So I, I only put the peppers in with no peppers at all down through here so that heat can go. Otherwise, they'll be charred there too. Gotcha. Charlie's right here. That's Charlie's peppers that he gave me. So you can see on the back side here where they're getting a little bit more heat because they're darker. And so, so does that stuff bother you at all? Caramelize, and get a little shiny on there and it's starting to get wrinkled. Yeah. This has been on for about five hours, maybe five and a half hours. And I'll take it to 10-ish, something like that, 10 hours or so. And do the, does the top finish faster? Like uh, you rotate it, it them? Does, here, I'll pull this one out. See that you can see how those are those are more wrinkled right? right so that's a little bit more done but when i have it full like this the smoke doesn't go through the smoker the same way right so um so do you ever rotate them or you just it i is do what sometimes it is. Yeah. but i mean the, what, the, see this here look at this look at all this right now that's just char right that's just ash because it's so hot coming right from the underneath where the smoke's coming from. Right. And then that's what, why does that I don't feel have good? Here, and that's why I have the trays there. Gotcha. So the heat doesn't just completely singe them and burn them into half. Gotcha. So your smoker always like operates like that. Yeah. Like that's the yeah. hot spot. That's it. Yeah.